I grew up with my nose shoved in Revolutionary War textbooks. I was fascinated with the events, the battles, and the people that helped shape this war. So when 2015 came around and Hamilton the musical appeared on Broadway for the first time, my history buff heart almost exploded. Through a mix of R&B, soul, and rap, we are presented with the lives of those who dedicated their efforts to create the United States. And for the past four years, my favorite two songs have been History Has Its Eyes On You and Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story. The message behind both of these songs is a simple one. Beware of ambition, because you are not in control of your narrative. The musical ends with the company asking the audience, as well as reiterating the motive, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. Just like any good storyteller, I want to set the stage. I was born in Nicaragua, and in my home country, storytelling is an art. As children, we are introduced to a world full of heroes and tribes that help us explain why things are the way they are. The Nicaragua I knew was peaceful, it was full of beauty and folklore. Now, I want to ask all of you to please close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, I want you to picture a lush emerald tropical rainforest, the buzzing of the insects around you, the sweet smell of the native flowers, the rocks and leaves crunching underneath your feet as you make your trek. Everything around you, the green and blue, is just so beautiful. Keep your eyes closed. I hope you can see it. Now, imagine a small antique village, but the peacefulness of the scene is broken when you notice that smoke is billowing into the air, and as you get closer, screams flood your ears, and you the distinctive smell of gunpowder hits your lungs. You see crimson red blood staining the streets and that blood belongs to protesters and students. You notice a man dressed in all black fire into an innocent crowd of unarmed civilians. Please open up your eyes. Life in Nicaragua seemingly changed overnight. As of April of last year, a social, economic, and political crisis hit my home country. It all started when the president decided to slash social security benefits. The people took to the streets by the thousands, demanding that he resign. This led to a domino effect. The government cracked down on the protesters by mobilizing paramilitaries, police officers, and the military. And since April of last year, 325 people have been killed in these clashes, and thousands more have been murdered, have been kidnapped, have been arrested, and have been um, just completely wiped out of any knowledge from that anyone knew of them. They just disappeared. But the thing is that this was not the Nicaragua I knew. My life was changed when I received the phone call in last May. Because I moved to the United States when I was seven years old, leaving behind friends and family. But I received the phone call from one of my friends that would just bring back that song, that closing number from Hamilton, make me ask, who lived, who died, and who told our story? I vividly remember that the first thing I heard was the sound of gunfire and martyrs, as well as bombs in the distance. I pull back to make sure that the correct person is calling because this sounds like a war, but it was the correct person. I can hear my, I can barely make out my friend's voice on the other side of the line, and they're speaking so desperately, so quickly that I can't understand them. They're usually very calm and reserved, so that should have been my first warning sign. I ask, is all well? I don't get a response, and by now my desperateness is reaching all levels. And I ask again, is all well? I got told that Nicaragua is and was in a state of turmoil. 
My friend tells me that they're part of a medical group that works with the wounded protesters and helps treat their injuries. That for hours a week, what they do is that they go to undetermined locations and help them heal, essentially. And many times they're able to save them, but many other times they can't save a protester who was purposefully shot in their head, in their hearts, or in their stomachs. I am told that the Department of Health has prohibited government hospitals, public hospitals, from taking in protesters, and that a majority of the deaths come from the lack of medical attention, that the government was leaving young people protesters to succumb to their wounds right outside hospital doors. Now imagine sending off a family member in an ambulance only to find out hours later that you will never see them again. And the last thing that your family member, that your friend saw was a group of paramilitaries hijacking that ambulance and they were strapped with guns and machetes. You don't know if they're dead or alive. The worst part of the conversation was not the graphic details of what it was like to be in the room with someone trying to hold their intestines in. The worst part of the conversation had to be the realization of everything. It was at that moment that I realized my friend had not called me because they wanted me to know the war zone Nicaragua had turned into. They called me because they thought that this was the last time they would ever get to speak to me. This was their goodbye. In general, I knew that bad news were coming, but I didn't know that it got to this point. So they took a moment and they told me that the conflict was at its worst and that the chances of them being caught by the government and being executed on the spot were higher than ever. I didn't know what to say. I mean, what could I say to that? But before finishing the conversation, my friend asked me to promise them three things. And they were the following. The first was that I could not let their death affect me to the point where I destroyed every other aspect of my life. That no matter what happened, I had to be strong and I had to keep on going. The second was that I would get my degree and with that degree and the education that came with it, I would help prevent crises like the one going on in Nicaragua. And I can still recall the melancholy in their voice as they made me to take the third promise, which was to remember and I can just recall back to that specific moment where they told me, I want you to remember that we were your friends. And I want you to remember that we existed and that it was our choice to help others. And I want you to remember the others, those who were more brave than us, those who took out to the streets. I want you to remember because the world tends to forget. And although the world may forget, I don't want you to because a lot of people are concerned with making history. Not enough care about remembering it. And the latter is more powerful than the former. They hung up not too long after that. And I spent the next couple of days, weeks, and months in a state of anxiety, a state of desperateness, and a state of anger because I would check back with the news and realize that only a few news outlets were covering the massacre that was ongoing in Nicaragua. I would see that no one would be talking about the young lives that were lost. I saw no one talking about the doctors that sacrificed their life. I saw no one talking about people like my friend who did not ask for anything other than to be remembered. And I knew that the stories of these men and women would end the moment their life did if no one said anything, if no one remembered their sacrifice. And I knew I had to do something to keep my promise, anything. I couldn't forget. So I began to do what I do best. 
I began to tell stories about them, about everything that was going on. Because you see, storytelling lets us become something greater than ourselves. Storytelling allows us to see the world from different perspectives and empathize with those people in the stories. It allows us to know that there is a world and that there are others and that we exist to empower one another. And many times in history, the story of so many have gone forgotten because no one has been interested in telling their stories and they deserve better. We see people who are completely forgotten and people for centuries have fought against discrimination, injustice, oppression, and sometimes they've won and other times they've lost. And the thing is marginalized communities are told by their oppressors that they don't have a story worth telling, but they do. And the context, the content of their narratives cannot be forgotten. The values, the goals, the bravery behind every single one of them. We must speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. We must speak for them and we must speak with them. Many of us want to be able to impact the lives of others. And I understand that your story is important and that you want to use it to inspire many other people. But the real importance lies in telling the stories of others because as individuals, as who you are, your story is inspirational, but as a human being, as a greater part of humanity, the stories of others could change lives. And it's about time we take a risk and we take a change. Many of us want to leave an impact while we're still alive. And it's hard coming up with ways on how to do so. But if I've learned anything, it's I honoring someone else's narrative is the best way to be remembered. Because that's what a legacy is. A legacy needs storytellers to be able to stay alive. A legacy cannot be lived out by the person who left it behind. It needs others to carry it forward in order for it to reach its full impact. And upon reflection of everything, of the war stories, of the sacrifices that I learned in this past year, an answer to the song that I had heard from Hamilton finally appeared. And I don't know if Lin-Manuel Miranda had this in mind when he wrote it, but the answer was clear. And it's that we live, we will die. So let's tell their stories. Life is too short, too precious to only concentrate on one narrative. There is so much beauty and strength and value and worth in the stories of the people inside, but also outside of this room. And while I may have only spoken about Nicaragua, I want you to keep in mind the people and the places that go forsaken many times. Places and stories like Yemen, like Myanmar, like Syria, like Venezuela. Every story is worth telling. Everything I've gone through has taught me that. And that's the thing about humanity. We interconnect with one another. Human history is not defined by the story of one person. It's defined by the story of many. So go out for these stories, search for them, embrace them, empathize with them, but most importantly, advocate for them. And there's only one question that won't be as easy to answer as the one post in Hamilton, and that's whose story will you tell? Thank you.